And hello everybody, welcome to our third uh, um, artist talk. It's, it, uh, yeah, it's, no, hold on. This is our fourth artist talk. I'm confused. Yay! <laughs> yeah, it, it's our fourth. I just, I realized I have the wrong we number. We should definitely on celebrate it. Yeah, so welcome to our fourth artist talk. Uh, uh, with, with me today is a great painter who I came across um, on Twitter because of another great painter. <laughs> Um, Who was it? <laughs> so, well, I I came across your account through Pavel Sokov's uh, Twitter. Yeah. And, okay, Pavel. Pavel is a great. Yeah. So, and I knew about Pavel's stuff because of Proko's YouTube channel, and then yeah, his Instagram. He's also great. He is, and then and then he shared some of your stuff, and then so with us today we have the great. I I may mispronounce your name. I actually do not know how to pronounce it correctly, but I'm gonna try to say it. Tanya. Sorry. Rivals? I don't know how to say your last name. Wow, I did. I never heard this <laughs> this variant. Actually, rivals. This is so cool. Rivals. Wow. I will. I will remember it. I think I will change it in my passport. Uh, no, it's actually Rivilis. Rivilis it sounds okay. like yeah, because it's um, like I I pronounce it in Russian way, so it's like Rivilis. Okay. And if you say Rivilis, it would be even cooler. Rivilis, okay. All right. Uh, but All difficult right. for English speakers, maybe. It's, it's like, well, like, to me, English is a bit of a weird language in itself because I's and E's can sort of be replaceable, at least in my eyes. Oh. So I'll, like, I'll read something with two I's and I'll pronounce it as if it's an I and E just because I'm like, yeah, that's how it's, that's totally how it's done. It's not, that's not okay. how it's done at all. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why I love I love German language because it's just you know so straight. What you see, that's what you read. So it's easy peasy. Do you speak German? Yeah, I speak German because I live in Germany, so I have to speak German too. And sometimes these three languages uh, just mix in in my in my head. So I'm also learning Japanese actually, and I started learning Portuguese. Uh, oh wow! Because yeah, I love P Portugal so. Yeah, it's like kind of mix in um, my head. To me, it's I like I speak Arabic fluently and I speak English fluently, and then I'm I'm slowly picking up Spanish because of my girlfriend and French because I live in Montreal in Canada. Um, yeah. And then so it's like it's you you speak you have to speak German, but por how fluent are you in Portuguese? Uh, no, I'm just a beginner. Ah, okay. uh, same in, in in Japanese. So because I'm learning it myself, I'm trying to do it myself. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, because of Corona, I didn't have chance to go to some school or courses. I see. There are still some online courses, but I didn't have time because I have main job and then art. So it's kind of difficult with time for me. Um, do I, you... I try to do it myself. So I, I actually, so for, for the longest time when I first met you, I thought you were a full-time artist until, um... Oh no, I've, unfortunately not. So, I'm dreaming about this. <laughs> which, which to me is a little bit, I, I was surprised, honestly, because your, your quality of work is, is insane. Um, oh, thanks it, a lot. And I was just, well, do you mind if I ask you what, what your real life job is? Because like a lot of people in the space have jobs or have, are planning to leave their jobs and, and i would just like want them to be aware it's like you know some of some artists also still have day jobs if you don't mind yeah yeah sure so my main job is uh, tv advertisement oh wow uh, yeah so uh, we like uh, me and my husband we have uh, a little company where we prepare like all these uh, tv videos and production post-production etc um, yeah, so this is my main job. That's what I do from 8 a.m. till uh, 7 p.m. After that, I try to do some sports, mm -hmm. my, like sport junkie. And at the end, so around at like 8, 8.30, I try to do uh, art. So I don't have a lot of time for art, actually, but on Sundays, I'm, I'm painting all day. So I'm full-time artist. Sundays full time artist. Sundays full time artist. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but unfortunately, you know, I'm dreaming about being a uh, full time artist. But um, but at the same time, I'm I'm 
pretty happy that I have like a main job. So I have my salary. I have like uh, you know my um, like money that's mm. coming from this main job. So I don't need to worry too much about like how I will survive from art because it's pretty difficult actually. I it I it is actually I'd say I've yeah. I've sort of become a full time artist in the past like two months or I'm trying to be and it's it's hmm? it's a struggle. It's going. It's it's yeah. it's a bit of a struggle. It's I see why people don't do it <laughs> like fully. <laughs> um, the stress is 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 maddening, but it's like I'm 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 uh, like I'm fanatic about art. well is fanatic a word no. Is the correct? I am. I'm crazy about art. You know, it's like, and I'm it's like about you know English grammar words. I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I like just like it's. I'm the way I look about about it is like if I can't be a full time artist, I will find a job in the artistic field whatsoever, right? Which yeah. which goes to to your Absolutely. point, which is like you you work in an artistic field, not not like a, yeah, still creative, yeah. Right, exactly, and so it's like a lot of people like. I think if they realize, or at least like should try, you know, if they can't be full-time artists to seek out any job that allows them to be creative, it's, it's, you never know the connections you're going to make in places like this. Um, Absolutely. And then sp speaking to your Sunday full-time artist, I, <laughs> when did you start painting? Uh, it's a funny story. Uh, because I started painting at the age of 27 when I moved to Germany. Wow. So I was like, yeah, I, it's, I, I'm not so uh, alone in this art, uh, mm. unfortunately, too, because I think sometimes I'm just thinking if I would start earlier, so it would be like much better than I am I'm now. Um, yeah, but at 27, when I moved to Germany and I was, really lonely here i had no friends and i had no like people to talk there was no internet where i was and there was only church bells so it was like crazy as hell and yeah i just thought i will i will i need to do something you know like to um to, just to, get... to uh yeah to <laughs> and and i just uh bought like kind of uh, brushes oil paints and i started with like small little brush to paint and yeah uh, i i loved it i now i can't imagine my life without art but just at 27 like almost like van gogh <laughs> so <laughs> but crazy did you have any like drawing or painting experience before then or no oh no that's <laughs> That's the problem because still and until today I have to manage everything myself. I have to learn, um, like I have to do. I, I'm doing. I'm still doing so many things in TV, in TV, mm. uh, like by heart, you know, like uh, like by feeling. So, but if I would know more, like uh, if I would learn it, it would be much much easier for me. But. Yeah, I just have to suffer it and go through it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm honestly, okay. it's like I'm surprised because it's like, it's this, it's sort of like similar to Pavel, to Pavel where he's like, he used to be in business school, I think, and then he just became an artist at like 24. Just, yeah, sure. But the difference is he used to draw before like like digital mm -hmm. illustrations and you, you didn't. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm mind blown because... Your paintings are really good. Are they so much? It's like, all right, like still, <laughs> like because I'm I'm looking I'm on your website right now and it's like it says okay you moved from Germany in 2000 uh, moved to Germany from Russia in 2012 right so <laughs> if you started painting around 2012 right that's not even yeah, like that, that's not ten years. It's almost 10 years uh, next year, right? And I think so. And like I I've I've I'm also coming up on 10 years of just drawing and painting, but I've just done it through school, like school has taught me stuff, right? And then university has mm -hmm. taught me that. And so to look at the difference of just like 10 years of like your dedicated work, just like you compared to like others who spend 10 years like going through the system, like educational system or like 
other ways. It's actually insane. Like, oh, thank you. Because wha- no, it's a compliment. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, well, this how it happened. I I don't know how it. it you know, like I was always uh, in love with art because I was so in love with art history. That's what I was learning in my university. Mm. Um, like actually, I was on uh, graphic design. And art history, I choose this subject as an extra subject. So I, I just visited these classes. And like art history was always my love. And um, But I never had chance to paint actually. Like uh, I just uh, tried this oil paintings here in Germany and I really loved it. Um, so yeah, I was always like near art, mm-hmm. but I never, I, I was never in art. <laughs> but I'm happy that, yeah, this Germany uh, pushed me, you know, like this loneliness, uh, depression, I don't know what, but something pushed me into art and I'm absolutely thankful. And, and it's like, and it's also paying off, like you have a, you have a show in New York, which is... It's like, yeah, that's great. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> it's like you that's you should be. It's like uh, that's like like people artists having a show in New York is like the the it's like that's a thing, you know? Like everybody just like, yeah, I want to have a show in New York and here you are having yeah, this a show in New York. Gallery is amazing. Um it's Arcadia Arcadia Gallery. It's like one friend of mine, he said it's like Oscar uh, for uh, for artists, so it it sounds really cool, but I like this quote. It's like Oscar for artists, so I'm I'm telling everywhere now. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling this everywhere. <laughs> are, hey guys, I have an Oscar. <laughs> are are people able to visit it in person if they're in New York? Yeah, sure. But I think a lockdown is uh, finished there. Like oh, they yeah. don't have any. Yeah, no. yeah just. To, go whenever you want wherever you want yeah no america hasn't had to deal with the lockdown in a little bit i think they're they've been able to go and just visit stuff i'm dreaming to go to new york actually i was planning to go this summer uh for opening this exhibition but COVID. unfortunately i was not vaccinated etc etc oh and, yeah you know the story <laughs> yeah no it's, it's yeah no i, I like well so i guess like do you well, here, let me ask you this. Do you do you plan on, okay. like, creating or, like, taking the paintings in that show and turning them into NFTs now that you're in the NFT space or no? Um, you know, I'm a bit afraid of this uh, now because I had already an issue with one painting that was in a gallery in Netherlands. Mm. And um, I turned it into NFT. And um, the client who bought this painting, the physical painting, mm-hmm. told the owner of the gallery, like, what the hell? Why Why I see that this painting is uh, uh, on sale again? Like, uh, why, why she's selling this painting? So, and I tried to explain that NFT is a little bit different. It's not a physical painting, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it didn't work because here in Europe, it's... Uh, still a new thing so it's still unknown it's still like you know uh, especially in traditional art sphere it's like uh, unknown thing so I had like a little bit troubles with gallery and because I'm still hanging there I didn't want to spoil my relationship with oh, them I so see. I just <laughs> yeah I just burned uh, three NFTs I think it was painful oh <laughs> yeah. no yeah, I had to burn it because there were so many questions. Uh, I was it was really difficult to explain. So, you know, to people who so in traditional art, they just don't understand how it's possible. I can't touch it. I can't buy it and hold it and hang it on my wall. So I just burn it. This three NFTs. That's uh, uh, that you know that okay. that must have been annoying because, like, yeah. I'm coming from the fine art space, but. Like I am, I am of the younger generation, so I already understand the difference between the digital and the physical, and uh. I also understand that, like any work sold pre NFT discovery is, 
is game for being nft right we it's not it's not in the contract because nft like you didn't write in the contract no no digital reproduction is ever to be sold that's not in there right so it's like to me that man that that's that sucks i'm sorry you had to deal with that because (laughs) <laughs> like oh can we can we say bad words can oh I- oh absolutely oh you can yeah you <laughs> okay okay you can you, you can fucking curse it doesn't matter <laughs> this is not an institutional I don't know my English, but i have i know many bad words <laughs> <laughs> to me it's like part of my motivation for these talks is like i would go to the artist talks in my university and they would just be so fucking boring it's like hey talk about your piece like that and then the artist would just go on for 20 minutes about the themes and you'd be like there is no conversation here right and it's like yeah. the artist said like lets a bad word slip and then everybody's like ooh, and the prof is like mm. and you're like okay god like no we're we're not children we're adults you know and so here you can you can cool. curse okay. yeah i know it's it's like there's like yeah, there's a lot yeah, of like. I'll we'll do it like a baby because you know I'm not very like <laughs> advanced in English language, so it will sound like a baby for you. <laughs> oh no, it's just fine. It's like, I mean, like every, there is like weird hidden politics in like all these like art talks too, right? That I just don't like to deal with, you know, like mm-hmm. professors trying to get an up smart on the to- the artist they're talking to to like look smart in front of their students, and you're like, okay, like this is just. Or like professors yeah. like doing deeds for like there are like fellow graduate students too. It's just like okay, cool, but not here. Here we focus about <laughs> here we focus about the conversation about and about the art, um, which is I actually I really want to talk to you because you're one of the only few painters that I personally talk to over in the on the Twitter space, right? And oh wow. Like there's like there's not a lot of like traditional painters. Like I I try to talk to Trevor Jones like through tweets here and there. Um, mm-hmm. Hinraku. He, he said he's not very very. Uh, he's a busy man. Like, like about talking. Yeah, yeah, no, he has like an Ice Cube collaboration, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, and then <laughs> I try to talk to uh, Hinraku a few times. He's he's pretty cool mm-hmm. on the on Twitter. Um, but my main interest is. Like you know, I've seen. I don't know if you've seen Beanie's Twitter, but uh, like he's a he's a figure that is in the. Like he's a he's a figure in the NFT space and in the crypto space, and and a few times he's been talking about how painters should stick to paint and not. And not go to NFTs because it's a digital mm-hmm. medium. So therefore, you should work in digital format only, and. That pissed me off because essentially, like, for how long did we stare at pictures and appreciate them for what they are before getting the ability to own them now? And then uh, out of nowhere, it's like, yeah, okay, but the texture, all all the, the texture, the painting, the hues, <clears throat> the lighting situation that you choose as the artist in the picture, right? All that mm-hmm. apparently is no longer important. And it's like, it's funny to me because, like, I, I'm the type of artist when I'm looking at paintings, I'll new tab the work. Right, I won't save it because, like, I don't need to save it. But it's like I'll new tab it to zoom in, because if you new tab, if you, uh, for the people listening, if you new tab the work, you get the actual uploaded file, right? Yeah. And so I zoom in, and I just that's my look for detail, right? I just like if if I can zoom in a lot and you're and the the everything is sharp, it's like okay, you're you're good. And then I do that with like for example your art segments project. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then good quality. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank and, God you didn't talk about the previous. <laughs> well, like, I didn't do- download it in very good quality. I, I know everybody. Like, I, I have some ones that are really bad quality too. But it's like I when I new tab those, it's like the texture translates really well, like insanely well. It, yeah. Right. It's like you get. You know, it's like it's a cliche to say you can almost feel it, but you yeah you can almost feel it. Right. And it's like. And especially I noticed in your work and like, I, I want to know about your process because it's like, you're a very texture heavy artist, right? Like, yes, I am. Like, I it, love texture. And like my biggest thing like that excited me when I first looked at your work is you paint on drywall, which could you like, could you explain to people why on something like drywall yeah. or like how, wood how chip? You, how you call it in, in English? W- wood chip. Yeah. I've heard this name, wood chip. Yeah. Something. Like, like the wood chip drywall thing I, I okay i will dry, uh, write it down because 
Yeah, it's nice. You know, I'm learning from your new words and everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need to write it down. Yeah, uh, well, I'm, that's a funny story. I found this wood chip mm -hmm. uh, um, in, in uh, the, um, how, how do you call this shop where you buy everything for building houses? Like, everything. A, like a warehouse store, like a hardware, warehouse hardware store. store. Yeah. I don't know what you call it. Yeah. Yeah, so I found in such store and it was like in, in garbage area, you know, where they throw all these uh, pieces of uh, mm. unused wood, everything. And then, like, I, I walked near and I saw this uh, wood mm. chip. Uh, yeah, and I thought like, oh, wow, that might be a very nice uh, surface to paint. And yeah, when I, I tried first, portrait I did like because I'm painting mostly portraits and I tried first portrait and I saw that the structure of the pressed wood allows the oil to take uh, on a new um, like level the highness the expressive power of mm. oil because oil is already like a texture it's like already a power of brush strokes and yeah well it just emphasized this texture and this power of oil so I, I just fell in love and then I posted on Instagram and actually just once I post like a portrait on this wood chip um, heard uh, I, I've got immediately messages from two galleries so and I thought like okay that's that's my way that's that's a, like a good uh, thing to do because you know like two galleries immediately um, uh, wrote me that yes. okay I want your paintings that's really good um, yeah. so actually... I found like I, I kind of found my my voice you know uh, okay. it's really difficult for artists to find it you know that's, that's um, very true it happened unexpectedly um, well how do you how do you think your work is gonna evolve from from where it is now you know, because like, like you say, like not a lot of artists find their voice, but once an artist finds their voice, you know, it's like it's expansion and building time on, on the voice, right? You at least mm -hmm. that's what I think would happen. Like, how do you how do you see your like your paintings? Of, yeah, well, like not, not your future, <laughs> because like that's a big question to ask. But like, how do you see your paintings evolving? You know, like, yeah. because we often, like, have multiple paintings in our mind when we work on something and we want to build on it. Or, like, this could be cooler if it was that. How do you how do you see your work just growing, you know, in the next year, maybe, or, like, the next five years? Um, I should say I've noticed already some changes from my first uh, painting on this wood chip mm. uh, until now. Because it's, it, it became, like, more powerful in color and more powerful in texture and uh, I start using like almost graphic brush lines that's like what I've noticed but I, I see some changes uh, through this <clears throat> like three years or two years I think uh, since I'm I painted my first um, well I, I think I will go into more texture definitely mm. I will go into more uh, contrast colors for sure because that's what I feel I should do and I feel like uh, galleries like it I feel that people feel it better you know like they they just feel this expression better and um, you know I, I would love to try a big uh, size like mm. uh, maybe two meter or something like this but my studio is a little bit small for this <laughs> but I will find the way <laughs> Um, just to, yeah, get, so I, I would, uh, yeah. I was gonna say get a mural, just uh, paint a mural. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's that's where I'm I'm trying to move. Like I'm trying to move into like uh, vivid colors, mm. uh, texture, brush strokes, crazy, insane, uh, dynamic works, and as bigger as better. So <laughs> well, like I'm looking at some of. I shared the link to the list of your artworks on your profile, like the artwork tab, and I'm looking at it, and it's you, your choice of colors is. Uh, it, is it right? It's well, it's like it's eye-opening actually, because it's like you're mixing colors together that I wouldn't expect to have been in the same painting. Yeah, cool. I I also don't expect that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and yeah. like, so I'm I'm looking at a work specifically. Uh, Superman has feelings too. 
Mm-hmm. And, yeah, red, blue, boom. And, but also like the white outline on the hands, right? Like just to like make the hand, because like I, I've told you this before on Twitter that I'm, I'm, I think your hands are pretty identifiable. Um, like uh, if I look at a painting of you, of like if I see just a painting of like or like hands cropped out of yours, I can tell it's yours. And oh, like. Cool specifically in like works like superman has feelings too or also like some of the prints where like the hands are very spacey mm-hmm. those like those are insane i i think those like the color choice yeah. on that is insane cuz like you're you're able to go from like pinks into greens and then back into like blues which is like they sort of sound similar but it's like all together crumbled up like when you try to do that as an artist it's pretty hard to get all the colors to mesh well together um and it's like, it's like mosaic or something. Like, yeah. I'm just, well, yeah. do you work in, I like, I, your work doesn't have a lot of blending in it. Do you, do you work in oh, like blocks no, no. of color? I, I try not to, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just love blocking it. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of sculptures and I love how forms is uh, made. So if I see like a face, uh, I mm-hmm. just try to form in it like with brush so strokes like each angle each brush stroke and i'm uh i'm i i think i never blend just maybe for like a background i blend a, a little bit just to do this uh you know like um uh from one color to another but no just blocking just to like bold brush strokes um and yeah i'm, I'm like trying not to um not to you know like um, mix colors on on my canvas like on my uh, wood. Mm. Um, yeah, so open colors and very uh, graphic brush strokes. I think <laughs> um, I can explain it like this. It's very difficult, you know. It's difficult to explain how yeah. you paint because oh, yeah. you know if I would be teacher, I would say like, oh well, this that, <laughs> uh, blah blah, you know like. I would know what to say, but you're asking me, and actually it's difficult to explain because it's kind of process of of my soul or heart or, you know, like, it's so difficult to express. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> it, it's because, like, well, from my experience, I, re- I had a teacher, my first year in university, I had a teacher that tried to drill the whole notions of block of color to the to her whole class. Um, mm-hmm. it sort of worked, didn't work a little bit like, you know, just first year students will never listen to their teachers. That's a fact. <laughs> and uh, because they think they're already too cool. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, it's like everybody in first year is like, that's my style. And everybody just looks at him like, you yeah. know, you know, nothing. I know, that's how I see it. <laughs> and then. Everywhere you see, everywhere. <laughs> I talk with guys in, in St. Petersburg's uh, Academy and they're same. Like, I think all, all our students are the same. Yeah, no, it, it's like in, in this weird sense, like I legitimately think like educational institution has started to do more damage to stu- to art mm-hmm. students than than good because you're no longer being taught to paint you're no longer you're you're being to, taught sort of how to think but it's like like again like you you're self taught right and it's like i in my university nobody showed me how to draw or paint i had to teach myself all of that all they did is like okay here is color theory or here is how yeah. you blend right and so oh. I think like a big part of also like your style of work and like how you're able to use the colors the way you use them um, is because mm. you're also self-taught, right? You, you like um, how do how, how do you say this? Essentially, like teachers, a lot of teachers in the fine art world don't essentially like do the the whole mentorship thing anymore, right? Because they're either like sort of afraid that their mentor is going to be the kid they're mentoring is going to be bigger than them by 10 times. <clears throat> wow, that's selfish. Oh, well, absolutely. Like, that happens all the time. Like, like in every university, like, the, the rivalry between students and teachers can get pretty insane. Like, Crazy. It, like, yeah, like, it's like you, there's good quality work out there that gets ripped apart because the teachers are vengeful because they're like, oh my God, how are you this young and producing wow. this level of work? And 
a lot of times like those students leave university and essentially just eclipse like well ecl is eclipse the word i think so like don't ask me <laughs> I, <laughs> um like they essentially like outshine their professors by a mile like not even like not even close yeah, right yeah. And, and so like in the sense it's like your your ability to use colors like comes because no you haven't been taught you haven't been forced to use somebody else's style right just you're, playing you know i mean i'm just playing because i don't i don't know the rules it's like playing some game it, but you yeah. don't know the rules so you just start doing some insane crazy shit so exactly. that's what i'm doing on my wood chip <laughs> no exactly because like well like to like you know i hate to bring picasso because like he's the most brought up artist in every conversation mm -hmm. but uh, his, boring right but like his biggest thing towards the end of his life was like drawing as a child but like the biggest thing of that was going against every educational thing that he learned um in yeah, it's kind of like he enjoyed it right <laughs> he just, advanced, uh, just enjoyed it and I, like yeah. i i think that's also part of it is because if you get a teacher that sets the rules for you and then you go out into the world thinking that those are just the only rules you're allowed to play with you, you'll only develop your style within those rules and you won't absolutely right yeah you know i had a good friend mm -hmm. from uh art academy this rapping art academy in st petersburg uh ivan loganov maybe you heard about him because yes. Pavel is his good friend He's in the NFT so space, he, uh, space as well, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he put uh, he listed two NFTs. They were sold, and then he listed another. And then he just he told me he's too busy to promote it and to be on Twitter, everything. So he just, you know, he he's too busy for this because he's teaching and uh. he's very 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 <laughs> like kind of famous artist in in St. Petersburg. So oh, I see. Um, yeah, yeah, and what he's he, what he said is um like because we're, we're good friends he's v visiting us here in germany mm. and i'm going to st petersburg sometimes and he said actually that it's good that i didn't study art because i can you know like i can involve uh, uh i can like you know uh not focus on some words that oh, were yeah. said to me like on some rules and i can you know like uh i can just express myself how i want because i don't know the limit exactly and that's yeah that's what he said actually an advantage of not to be in university because in art academy if you check uh artist uh styles from from art academy in st peter's oh, they would be like almost same I, I, just, identical. you know like <laughs> yeah, identical, and just a few of them would, you know, like just be uh, a slightly different or have their own voice. But actually, uh, it might be uh, maybe we have like a wrong system of education. Maybe oh, we do. It can yeah. be yeah. Maybe we should change it one day so you know artists can be more unique and uh, you know just well, teach them the basics, then well, let them go. It's I think well, like I think. I, I that's what I agree with you 100% and I think like w one of the ways you can go and do that like I'm I'm in I'm I'm now like an NFT crypto maximalist yeah. so like I just believe <laughs> that like that is the way now of just art and like life just to be NFT'd um mm -hmm. but I really do think that it's like in a world where like not a lot of power is like given to artists per se mm -hmm. right you ha you you have this thing that essentially breaks all rules allows yeah. you allows the artist to see enough funds come in with their own hard work and their own under their own hard work right that then they can mm -hmm. push their own explorations and what they want to their own limits right instead of yeah. being forced to go to the university route where your professor is telling you for this painting please explore color theory and you're like, what? And it sounds like, like professor. <laughs> right? I, well, it's like, because I've had, I've had classes like that. And it's like, it gets better as you progress through university. Like, as by fourth year, professors will be like, what are you working on today? This, cool, bye. Right? That's that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, but Sounds like all my friends. <laughs> and, and, right? And it's like, but, and then 
first year, it's always, and first, second year, it's always going to be like, all right, guys, for this class, I want you to focus on contrast in the landscape or something. And you're like, hmm. cool. I don't want to do this. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> right? And it's just. I want to pay dudes. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, that's also part of it, too. It's like, hey, the, the nudes, it's like, dude, what are the models coming in? And then you realize there is barely any models in fine art universities now, at least in Canada. In in my university, yeah. there was like none, and I was like, okay, cool. This is annoying. Like, where is the art? Uh, do, you, do you have actually uh, your like favorite uh, traditional artist? I mean, like in physical world. Yes, Egon Schiele. He. Ah. E oh, okay. Wow. E Egon Schiele has so ever since my. That's my favorite too. He, like he's his. I actually so he, there's an exhibition of one of his studies in montreal and so like mm -hmm. two weeks ago n no last week was the first time i saw an egon sheila in real life and it was fucking amazing it was uh, it was insane like uh this is my one of my favorite too i it, think you can you can check it if you see my like some of my hands oh yeah that's because i try same like you know i've told uh, you that before ugly I was like, poses. <laughs> yeah it's like his like you like your head like his hands and uh, like Egon Chila, his inspiration has made it into so many artists in ways that a lot of people don't realize unless you focus on something like the hands or like the way a mm -hmm. figure is distorted because the way yeah. the way he distorts his things it's like Klimt on crack you know because he, he, he Klimt taught I like so I know this because I wrote like six essays about the guy in university oh. and then like two in in high school <laughs> just because like <laughs> english classes like university like write an essay i'm like okay egon sheila let's go and so like his his distortion of figures is is insane and it's like it's Absolutely. It, okay well who is your what about you who is your favorite artist like physical artist okay um Oh, um, several, uh, of course, from uh, Russian critical realism. I, I, I don't know if you heard about Pirit Bizhniki. Uh, in English, it's like the Wanderers. Wonder, the Wanderers here. So, Wanderers, yeah. The they wonder. were like in St. Petersburg. It's like 19th century, um, I think end of 19th century, um, like a group of artists, and they said uh, to uh, Russian Academy, to this St. Petersburg Academy, they said, we will not paint your historical, biblical uh, stuff anymore. We will yeah. do our stuff. Do, did you hear about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's so the, they, the rejection yeah, so of, like... Said, like uh, yeah. mm. So they're, like, my heroes. Um, and, like, Repin, Kramskoy, um, and, like, Serov, but they're all Russian, so it's kind of difficult, maybe... Um, but one of my favorite artists who is living now, mm. and I, I hope you heard about him, it's Ruprecht von Kaufmann. I don't even... Do you, know him? Do you mind typing that name in the live stream question so I can search it? I, I can't even try to uh, sure. spell that. Uh, where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Where do I type? It's right above uh, the voice chat. So you just click on live stream questions. Uh, wait, I need... I need some time so <laughs> you can talk and I will yeah. I will try to find <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's on the section where you join the voice chat it's just right above where you click to join it's the thing with a hashtag next to it um but like yeah, we, I see we, okay. <laughs> we did. We did learn Ooh, about. I see a lot of my work. <laughs> yeah, I've been sharing some of it as as we're talking. Um, like, so Ruprecht von Kaufmann. He's insane. I've heard cough. I've actually. Yeah, I think I. German, yes. But he was uh, he was studying uh, in in America too, uh, like for for I think after college or something. Um, and he's crazy. And what I love in in his art most that he's painting from his head. I mean, like if you will check mm -hmm. his paintings, and I will try to find. Oh, I'm looking um, at them right now. I, I actually follow uh, him on Instagram. I I know him by his just yeah, last name I'm Kaufman. Sure. He's uh, my professor used him in a few classes as an example. His paintings are are oh. very well done. 
Yeah, and you say it's like like a someone's dream. And what what is crazy that he's painting from his head. I mean, like I talked with him once, and I said like like how it's possible. Like, I mean, like you painting all these figures and bodies from from your head. And he said, "What is obvious uh, answer?" He said, "You need a lot of experience." Yeah. I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you will tell me some secret, you know, <laughs> like, oh, how to paint, but no. Uh, Actually, you need some experience, my, first of all. Yeah, it's, my, my dad tells me the same thing every day. He's like, yo, Anubis, are you drawing? And I'm like, no, it's <laughs> like practice every day. And I'm like, okay, all right. And it's like, well, actually, so I asked... Our first artist on here, Death himself, I asked him, I'm like, hey man, um, I know from my own experience that, you know, I have a lot of works that are just hidden, nobody's ever going to see, right? And yeah. I asked him, I was like, do you have that? And he goes like, yeah, I have about, you know, like something like 240 paintings unseen. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what do you mean? He's like, yeah, just like in storage. I'm like, okay, cool. Damn. So and then I asked our yeah. second artist, Marco Matic, I was like, Hey man, do you have like you know, like is your house like filled well Michael like phrased the question better than I did. Um but he asked him like, Hey, do you have is your house filled with like art that we just aren't gonna see? And he's like, Yeah, it's it's filled, you know. And then Red Scanner, he's he his thing is just he's hiding his work. He's just like, Oh I I have a sh I have a lot, I'm just not letting it. And so my question to you is, do you have a lot of work that will we will never see ever? Just like your practice and studies. I, I just wanted actually to tell you that um, you know I just uh, if you will go right now in my studio you will see nothing because <laughs> I just sent yeah it's it's how it I don't know why but like I do for example ten paintings yeah and then uh, somehow it may be a destiny or a luck but then somehow like Arcadia guide uh -huh. me and say well what do you have we have exhibition can you send us something i'm showing them like this 10 words and say send them all <laughs> and i'm sending them and i don't have nothing in my studio and whenever like someone will come you know for example yeah to show uh, them i don't know yeah and they, they, they someone tell me uh write me oh i want to come to your studio and check what you have for sale and I have nothing because I just sent uh, my my paintings to one gallery. So I think it's because I don't have too much time and I'm painting after, after my main Your job. job yeah. yeah, I think that's why. So no, actually I have my old, old paintings or drawings um, from the beginning of my uh, past. But, but that's it. Actually, I don't have nothing to show right now. Oh. Strange. <laughs> what, what about you? I, well... Yeah, I, I, I just looked at it. I have a pile of paintings of of just unfinished or finished that I just haven't had the time to photograph correctly and put up. Um, mm -hmm. And then my sketchbooks, I have like, oh, my sketchbooks are cross-continental now. My, my dad has some and they're in Egypt. So it's like... I'm like, okay, cool. I, I, I try to use that a little bit on like when I'm in a gallery and like I meet somebody, I'm like, yeah, I have some work in a continent in Egypt and they just don't know it's my dad's. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, it's like I have private collections going up from like 2012 and all of that is just my dad. That's literally my dad just like hanging his <laughs> my stuff up on the wall. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to use you, dad. I'm just going to use that. But it's like my because of ever since like because i went heavy hard into the nft space my practice stuff is all on the computer and i just have like gigs i have in the past two days i've um like essentially built or created 21 gigs of content of just like practice Oh, and it's, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just cuz like I'm the I'm like it's the same way where it's like I think you can speak to this, right? Where it's like artists can be obsessive about their art, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so I I I am very obsessive about like the technological stuff that I just and like if if there's anything that I find cool and then that I am able to then do myself on a computer, I just obsess. Mm -hmm. And so that's my hellhole. Um and the, well, we're all like crazy, so it's huh? normal. We're all like crazy, so it's normal. Yeah. 
it's yeah it's like i'm also not good at anything else except art so like i have to like obsess about it i think you know <laughs> i'm not good at math <laughs> i tried cooking for a while but like that's a slave labor that i don't want to work in <laughs> um well so well like I, but funny enough i learned a flirt like I, I realized that a few things from like the day job help artists in their studio right and their and in their mm -hmm. artistic works mine most of my experiences like from the kitchen just now like if i have to go for three hours and actually get something done because i had to do that in kitchens and like survive mm -hmm. service i can do that right i wanted okay. to ask like since you work in a video production company right like with with your husband like you said it's like f cooking food is art is creative on one side but it's completely different than actually dealing with cameras and all of that and video editing and thumbnailing shots and like coming up with shots because that's closer to the art side than cooking right so <laughs> like what i don't I, know maybe cooking is closer <laughs> i like i i have seen some sculpture pieces about cooking like a deconstructed Caesar salad, which was weird. Uh, but do you like? Do you think your day job, like specifically in like the in the video production field, has aided your painting in some way? You know, I should tell that definitely it helps me to do like promotion video mm. and some kind of clips about like like that. Um, I was at... segment seventeen. I I did. Uh, yeah, no, I was so actually wondering me. about that. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, how, who's doing your videos? Because like your promotional videos were <laughs> insane. I was like, okay, like no, because it's like I, I would talk to you and you'd be like, hi, I can't use Discord, and then you would drop like an insanely CGI video, <laughs> and I would be like, okay, like what is going but on? Was so sweet from you that you you suggest to help me with this. That was so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like and then you just dropped it and i was like okay but like that's cool as hell so it's like okay it, it's aided in that but like do you think it's aided your paintings a little bit or how you yeah depict? for sure but it, it it helps me a lot for example um i i work mostly from photos mm. because i don't have a model for sitting with models chatting um so i work mostly from from photos and it helps me a lot to um, you know, to paint sketches, to think about composition, because I use a lot of uh, I iPad Pro. Um, so, but like on on digital thing, I'm working a lot, and I'm um, I'm I'm a beginner at C Cinema 4 4G. Uh, mm. Is it is it correct in in English? Yeah, Cinema 4D. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, C Cinema 4D, and. Um, and like uh, After Effects, everything. So my my work really helped me to um, you know to to do promotions and um, you know help me to do some nice or uh, looking like a professional stuff to promote my art. But um, like in 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 my paintings, I don't know. Maybe um, maybe it helped me to. See like you know like i can imagine my mm -hmm. paintings um like they're on photoshop you know okay. like in my head i can i can it's unfortunately there is no button like common <laughs> common uh, <laughs> that that's uh, uh so but but i think it helps me to promote my art mostly but maybe not so much in creating my mm. art Okay, that's that's all. Well, that's, that's it makes good... sense. Oh, you know <laughs> what? I'm yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does absolutely. I'm just, I'm just. Oh, guys, sorry, who's listening to me? I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, it's, for it's your okay. Ears and... <laughs> it's okay. Um, oh. Well, okay. And now I need a wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in depression. <laughs> uh, um, well, I, like, do you are you are you do you see yourself like sticking in the NFT space? longer i'm or how like how uh, um yeah yeah and um, like you continue your, your question because <laughs> i don't know why i'm interrupting you all the time oh no no it's, no, it's fine it's fine it's <laughs> like well like i was gonna say it's like how do you see yourself like just using um nfts in the future because i mean well 
You, you so you're for the people who quite, know quite. you're on foundation. Who, sorry for the people mm -hmm. who are listening. You're on foundation. You're on rareable, um, right. and both of your works can be found through OpenSea because OpenSea has is connected to all the Ether blockchains, right? But have you like thought about exploring, you know, or like using stuff like OnCyber or like Decentraland for your NFTs? Or like maybe like dynamic NFTs. Have you thought about stuff like that or no? Mm, yeah, you, you mean like uh, adding some some uh, digital uh, chain into my artworks, or do you mean like uh, showing my art in in um, like crypto universe or something? Yeah, like showing your art in the crypto universe, or even like including. Do you think you're gonna include like any digital elements in your work? Or no? I, I'm thinking right now about it because I see that uh, my uh, last uh, NFT is, it's, I mean, like, it's pretty quiet in mm. NFT uh, world right now for me. I don't know, like, maybe. Uh, oh, it's, yeah, it sales has slowed down a little bit um, and everybody's going uh, to collectibles. So you've noticed that too, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's... Because it's, yeah, it, it looks like a little bit quiet there. But um, yeah, so I added my last NFT that uh, segment number six and additional to this goes a physical painting. And actually I thought it would be really cool and someone will buy it immediately, but it didn't happen. Yeah, um, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I've had the same thing. Every like, I get excited every time I mint and then I get disappointed when it doesn't sell immediately. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like, you know, like you mean them and you think, oh my God, now in five minutes, everyone will start to bid. And... Yeah, yeah. But then you just wait two weeks, one month and nothing happens. And you're like, oh, okay, fine. On to the next. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you know, I don't know if I should post something, if I should mint uh, another NFT because I did already that mistake with, uh, after my first, I, I was so in you know I was so excited and I, I, I minted three Yo, I, in one day that's fine like I see like that's the thing like this space really loves to talk scarcity like it mm -hmm. really loves to talk like artists should limit themselves and they really love like the numbers game right but mm. in another sense it's like you, you should like fuck all of that you know like we're painters we're drawers a digital photographer right you have the opportunity to sell works that you know before never had a marketplace like a feasible marketplace for them and then now all these dudes with the big money are trying to tell everybody else hey guys don't fucking don't like try to sell out so much you're hurting our collections and it's like at some point it's like we don't care like you know it's like you as an artist should also just be able to mint like what you want right and it's like this i think the space like people forget that this space is so young right like everybody loves to talk about crypto punks and you hear yeah like crypto punks like since 2016 if i got back if i got into nfts back then and it's like if you got into nfts back then you wouldn't have made any fucking money like if we're being yeah. honest right like pranksy i ju i followed like pranksy as a twitter account was only at 4,000 followers by October of last year. This big, this okay. big insane jump of sales only happened in the past six months. Like, I'm not even kidding because Ether was only $700, $600 last year. Like, right? And so it's oh, just like yeah. the money jumped and then everybody's like, okay, they're just trying to control the money. And then what they don't realize is, yes, you're the sales will slow down a little bit because so many people are pumping right and at some point the level of output uh, of artist is not going right. to meet the level of demand for buyers right but we forget that it's like the crappiest of works like yes they'll get attention but then if they're really bad they won't hold value for for like six months you know might be right yeah but then like, like it's so crazy to see when something something really creepy is uh, selling so yeah. fast and for such a big amount of money it's so crazy like I mean like oh what the you know what the hell yeah why like uh, jumping uh, banana is yeah jumping bananas 
or a pickle but it's like yeah but also crazy. like look look at who's buying it and what's happening right like the pickle got bought and then it's being sold but like f for you you know trevor jones owns a painting of yours right yeah okay that's true i have i have a few collectors but they're very big that's right? what I'm proud exactly of. <laughs> and then and then it's or like Kikai. <laughs> Right, and then it's like you look at him, and it's like you've all like on your secondary on foundation, you've only one person is trying to resell your work, right? And for four and a half exactly, tenants, right? So, so it's crazy. like, like, and your art segment, your DNA of art segment is already built to be uploaded like multiple, right? Like, there's going to be multiple segments already, so it's like, don't stop yourself because like sales slow down because when sales slow down and then sales pick back up again you want stuff to be there for the people who want to buy your stuff right you don't want it right. you don't want it to be it's like your stuff blows up and then everybody yeah. goes to your to foundation right finds that you have you only have one painting available for ex like i only use this as an example and one person buys it and then they can't buy anything for like you know eight hours ten hours until you mint something again right uh, and it's like you know, I just uh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. No, no, continue. go. No, no, go ahead. Oh, I'm interrupting you all the time. I don't know why. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> so I will shut up. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, I just, I just remembered that uh, advice that Rob gave me in. Um, I was listening to that Twitter space mm. about cadets, uh, ca cadets. I don't know how you say it in English. Mm. Space cadets. Okay. Right. Space cadets. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I had opportunity to ask uh, Rob and uh, the other guy who was mm -hmm. like a big collector, and they also told me like not to um, not to list many uh, NFTs at the same time and just wait uh, until first is sold and then mint another one. You know, like this kind. So like they said, uh, patient, patient, patient. Like, That's I'm why I'm I'm waiting. Like patience, patience is key in the space, one hundred percent. If I wasn't, mm -hmm. if I wasn't patient in the space, I would have left two weeks after joining. Like immediately, oh. I would have been <laughs> like, "Bye." Le no, legitimate, because it's like, like this space is such a roller coaster that one day stuff will sell, the other day it won't sell, and then people will sleep on it for like two years, and then, you know, boom, insane yeah. sales, right? But it's like. It's like for the artist, like I think it's like should you pace yourself in minting? Yes, like one hundred percent, right? Like you, do, yeah. you don't, you like you, you don't want to mint everything you have. That's just like because some of the stuff you have is just not gonna sell. And the way I the way I built it, at least in my collections, was you have my hicket nunk. Like I have a collection for experiments and studies, and so that's my justification for like minting stuff on there every day or having like subpar unfinished work because it's studies and explorations right if it's if anybody wants to buy it it's there i don't care if it sells you know and then i have you see you're like like a person who don't who, who doesn't care and you, you're lucky because i'm i'm too sensitive you know oh. first of all i'm a girl and i'm very sensitive <laughs> and second i'm an artist and i'm very sensitive yeah. well, it's, <laughs> like... it's like double trouble I like I, I so like I am sensitive when it comes to my art in the sense like I get really like if somebody calls my art shit like I won't let them know that I'm mad but I get really fucking mad I get pissed well, but right. it's like I get pissed in like the way where it's like it like if you like if somebody tells me your your artwork is shit and it won't sell I delist it and I list it at a higher press just as a fuck you to them you know. Like that's that's been my mentality in the game. Like legit, ever since I did the game, it's like, oh, if something doesn't sell, I'll delist it and then list it up at a higher price. And if it doesn't sell, you if it sells, cool. and if it doesn't, it's like I'm sorry. I, I like I and it's like it's one of those sense where it's like I've been told like in universities and as artists, like so much so much of what stops us from doing stuff is ourselves, right? That, and I've told that to myself that no way in the hell, like no no fucking way, I'm gonna let somebody else stop me when I already stopped myself so many fucking times, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and it's like, True. and it's like, it's it's in that sense, I think it just like, but also like, yeah, should somebody like nuke their collection? No, but also like OpenSea, like 
Oh, keep in mind the 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 collection. How numbers are, uh, uh, what is it? Collected and displayed is weird, right? Because, like on OpenSea, your collection can have thousands, ten thousands, right? If you've had like twenty with an open edition that sold over five hundred editions, right? But then you go on Rarible and it says you've created ten pieces that have sold five hundred each. You see the difference? Yeah, absolutely. And so it's like the same thing happened. I, and like and that like people also need to be aware of that because like sometimes you'll see something you'll be like, oh, this artist is minting a lot until you actually click on the art, and you realize, oh, these numbers are just editions. These are not the actual pieces. You know. Yeah. And it's like, like to give an example to that, like to those listening, like if you go to my collection, it says I have fifteen billion NFTs. And that's because one, <laughs> yeah, no, I minted that because that's that's literally one NFT. It's fifteen. It's a fifteen billion edition NFT, and OpenSea is the only website that reads it as fifteen billion singular NFTs. And I'm like, wow, crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I don't. I I still didn't do anything like with editions. I just did like one of one. Have you? you know, someone told me that like. Do you think you're gonna kind do editions? Bad, better? Uh, I don't know, you know, I, I'm, uh, did you heard about uh, mm. Binance uh, NFT, uh, something like new uh, platform? Yeah, I did. I I don't know how to mint on it, though. Yeah, I also don't know, but, you know, um, I just heard and I thought, like, if I will try, because I don't know why, but I don't want to mix styles on mm. my platforms, like on foundation, I'm doing, like, kind of, um, like, you know, um, creative stuff with segments and mm -hmm. like pieces like this, you know, like something creative and on Rarible, I'm trying to list only like my paintings, mm -hmm. like they are. So just like, a, like a copy from, of physical painting. And I feel like if I will, if I will join third platform, I will do something like about sketches maybe, okay. or like editions or something. Okay. You know, it, I don't know if it makes sense not to mix uh, painting, you know, but it, it, it does. Just, I'm just looking like on my uh, platform or like on my uh, page, uh, like on uh, gallery. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you mix uh, paintings there, maybe it looks not so nice. Well, th so the best thing about something like that is, uh, you, you have you seen uh, Try Showtime? Yeah, I, I am. I'm also there. Right, and so like that's the best. Like that's that essentially is like the, the proof of concept for having multiple editions, sorry, like multiple styles on different websites because they're all you can display them all how you want them on a website like Try Showtime, you know. Really, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't so know about like, that. so if you go on Try Showtime, uh, I'm taking that. There is like a custom option where you get to select which NFTs you know you want to show and then you have the display option right but try showtime really? yeah like if, if so um like it, i'm on it right now if you go to your your own profile on there okay now we're, we're again having this lessons you know like no, no. <laughs> okay i'm listening to but you it, <laughs> but it's like if you go to your personal profile on showtime and you hit the all collections huh? button it separates it by yeah. website all right and so yeah so you just do that and okay. then and like and <laughs> everybody can do that so i can go to your try showtime profile and go through collections on different websites so it's it's one oh, wow it's, yeah it's 100 percent doable like and it's always nice to learn something from you <laughs> it's my pleasure of course. um <laughs> well so I have to wrap this up a little bit, but before wrapping this up, we received we have received one question from from Thruster. Oh wow, cool! Yeah. Who is this person? <laughs> Show me. He's he's the one. He's the he's the one right under you. I don't know if he's speaking. I I have him muted because of the recording, um, just because like the audio interferes and it's like audio levels are weird. But Thruster, I'll read your question, and we'll answer it. And to those listening okay. on the YouTube, cool. yeah, and to those listening on the YouTube video, yeah, join the MetaKey Discord because that's how you get your questions answered. Well, yeah, exclusivity and utility. Yeah, that's just for the video. <laughs> <laughs> and promotion is done. Yeah. Uh, so his first question <laughs> is, 
Well, he, I'll read his whole message. First time seeing Tanya's work and the hands immediately entranced me. It seems there is a unique relationship and shared prominence of the hands and face in your art that I haven't seen elsewhere. Was this yeah. intentional when you began painting or has this hand face dynamic evolved over time? Oh, so many uh, unknown words. <laughs> Uh, joking. Uh, oh, um, I, I'm just trying to read it because when when you told it, it's not so um, clear for me for my for my English understanding. Um, so if uh, like that, does it mean if my like hands uh, painting and uh, face painting was it like at the beginning or it was like over time, right? Did I, did I understand correctly? So, so you're saying. Like, when you here, uh, I'm looking at his questions real quick. Was there, so when you when you first started painting, right? Was the hand placement always associated close or to the face or around the face, or has that something that has started to happen as you painted over the years? That hands started to appear next to faces more. Oh, okay, now I got it. Okay, nice question. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I didn't think about that before, but <laughs> now I'm. Uh, <laughs> um, I should. I think uh, that all happened like that involved for mm. sure because uh, first I was like afraid to paint hands. I should say because it's like kind of difficult for me. But then I just realized that paintings are like part of portrait, and then can they can like tell more sometimes even more than face mm. I mean like maybe like a symbolism or uh, you know like a pose um, can tell more about person than even like a face um, emotions or like um, eyes or something and then I just uh, yeah I just like that hands and faces are giving us like the whole picture of person's emotions or his feelings so yeah okay. i think hands are also like a part of portraits now so i i'm i'm so in love of uh, in love with hands i think i will i will always paint hands and faces <laughs> <laughs> no, it will be like portrait of hands and faces now <laughs> that's a good answer and um we have we received another question um, this actually, oh, yeah, this, this <laughs> yeah, this question comes from small, and I'm actually really s smalls, and I'm really excited. Oh, it's I'm, a kitty bear. Yeah, I'm really excited about this question because I've talked to about to people about this, right? And I I don't think I've told you about this, right? But okay. because of your work and how highly textured it is, right? Uh, Have you ever thought about three D scanning your work? like high quality 3d scan and then putting it in a digital as a mo like creating a 3d model and then either a qu so smalls question is directed towards vr projection so putting it in vr right mm -hmm. but in general uh, have you just thought about 3d scanning your work and having a 3d model with just like the texture in it uh yeah i i, I got it um you know that that's what I tried to do in, in my segment uh, DNA of art work, mm -hmm. actually. But that was like a little bit different uh, uh, technology because I don't have 3D scanner. Actually, yeah. I, I have no idea where to get it. That's, That's, uh, like how, how you do it. I mean, like, do you need to go to some labor <laughs> or something? So, well, I know from my experience, universities um, have their own like tech hubs and mm -hmm. usually they'll have like a hack center there or like a science center that will have a 3d printer and a 3d yeah. scanner okay so you can try it i know you could people can try asking around in universities um mm -hmm. it must be like, yeah because i can have a big uh, technology university so that oh I yeah well have this you're in thing. germany so you have technology oh, you have technology over ah, there. it should be everywhere yeah <laughs> So it's just it's just a matter of asking. Um, and I would definitely love to do. Like that's actually insane. Smalls, you're a G for asking that question, because 
Yeah, it's a crazy question, but you know that's what I tried to do in 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 segments. Uh, but mm. uh, what I did it was like a very macro macro photo, mm. and then I uh, like transfer it into like 3D in cinema. Uh, mm. So like I did kind of you know like uh, magic with. Uh, with my uh, with this photo like macro photo to look like a 3D but mm. you know to have it uh, like scanned um, it would be much better I can imagine like I remember like the uh, this idea started from Chekai's uh, Twitter about I think 3D scanner of um, uh, Van Dyke uh, girl with a pearl ring mm. And that's how I wanted to. Um, that's how the idea to make this segment came. It's but, you know, like Louvre or I don't know which museum I can have a 3D scanner. Well, I don't have. I mean, so I just thought about this um, because you mentioned something uh, that reminded me. So there is a way to hack texture and smalls because you're listening and you asked the question just so you also know. Um, it's a really cheap way to hack texture that's done in 3D models. I've seen this in movie, uh, in like Blender videos, but it's like if you essentially overlay your image over uh, a block in Cinema 4D, for example, since Tanya used mm -hmm. Cinema 4D, and then you... I use Blender too, but... Yeah. You know, oh, okay, with yeah. Blender, and then you just use the extrude brush in the sculpting mm -hmm. tool and overlay your image on top of the block and start to extrude the texture and then tie the image oh. to the block or like UV wrap the image UV unwrap the image and then wrap it around the block you have your textured image so I'm just writing down because this is genius it's don't thank me thank Ivan something on YouTube he's he's the there's like a there's a That's YouTuber crazy. he he did a whole like show in blender like like post production it, no not Ivan his name is Ian Ian something here, I'll post his Twitter. Okay. I'll find his Twitter, and he like he wow, has. Wow, that's he, crazy! It's actually, very logical. If yeah. you think. Ian Hubert, that's his name. And so I'll yeah. post his Twitter. I recommend everybody check out his YouTube channel um, because he has tutorials um, oh, for all that. Awesome. It's they're very fast, they're very quick, but they get the point just done. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Can you mute my? Oh, it's for for uh, 5T3R. Oh, that's crazy. I should definitely try it. You know, I, I think to to list another uh, segment, but this time not like a part of I or something, but something more abstract that look like more mm. abstract and maybe like, um, you know, that people can think what the hell I posted. <laughs> Oh. Um, that would be maybe better, but you can do that. No, I'm, then... I'm... Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Another idea just popped into my head. <laughs> okay, tell uh, me. I you... love, I love collecting ideas. <laughs> uh, take one of your, take your paintings into pictures of your paintings into Photoshop. Um, go huh? to the effects, and huh? I think it's um, normals. You create a normal okay. map. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. For 3D, like, uh, texture. Yeah, exactly. So you, if you do that to your images and also take that and put it into the, the shading part of Cinema 4D, you get, ah, the, you, yeah. you, you get the texture there. Hmm. I think I need to pay you now. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, <laughs> this, this is meta key. This is knowledge given to, to you uh, and the meta key members. Well, and also YouTube in two weeks, but you know they get to find that out in two weeks. <laughs> well, like you week. should do some tutorials. I don't know, like open like some courses, how to be smart and intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's crazy! Wow, so many good ideas. Yeah, it's, it's, everything down. You yeah. know, just what mm -hmm. what I want to say that it's so so a, a little bit sad for me as an artist mm. that this uh, segment six not sold yet because what I was thinking you know like when I, when I prepare and I prepared this painting especially for this uh, NFT stuff for foundation and as for artists I'm really sad that 
you know, nobody bought it yet, and I can't send my painting, like a physical painting, because for me, you know, it's still like most important mm-hmm. part, not like NFT, but the body, because I feel like NFT is like kind of soul, but you know, like body, but the body is uh, mm-hmm. this physical painting, and I'm so, so, so sad, like an artist, but nobody bought it yet, and I can't stand, and people can't open it, and take in their hands, and say, oh, well, look, look here's yeah. I, segment, you know? I, I, so sad. I know, I know how you feel, it's like, but it's edges time, I really think, it's a really good project, like, I, I, it's, I have no problem saying it's far better than Pox, um, uh, a creation project because he had a, he had a whole idea where he released a picture of the creation by Michelangelo and people could mint the blocks and the whole concept of it is by the end uh, of the yeah. the deadline you know we would get a whole you new version. It, I think, right? Sorry, you showed me that. Yeah, I I, when I, I told sent you, you about like, my idea. Yeah, I was like it's so and so it's like I think it's far better than that because it also has utility. You, you the the artist gets to like sorry not the, like you get to send the physical painting out and the the viewer gets to actually touch the painting right which is yeah it's home. like Chikai I sent him my my painting after uh, after he bought my Sigmund 17 and he was so so freaking happy I think because he was like you know he he told me many times that it's so cool to hold something physical in your hand and find this little segment yeah. and try to yeah try to see what human eyes can catch you know this like uh, invisible for naked eye this world that is invisible and he tried to find this segment i think it's kind of game too and must be very exciting oh it's uh, oh no it's it's like i think people it just give it time and people will realize that the physical and the digital can be tied together in, in such a cool way and then they'll just like lose their mind um Hope so. Like especially because yeah, especially because you can't go to a museum and touch a, Pica- a Picasso, but you, you can't. Oh, you, know, you can. You, you, you can, can try. But then you 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 are in blacklist like I am in <laughs> Moscow. I can't go in several museums. That's not a joke. Wait, but like, can't you just like put on like a different hat and just like go in and nobody can tell it's you? <laughs> I don't. Know. Like is that is that no? It's like, but it's re- actually happened. I was several times in museum, and I touched because I couldn't stop myself. To, I wanted to see this uh, brush strokes, you know. Yep, like I, yep. I wanted to touch it, and the angry uh, babushka, you know, the angry Oma uh, <laughs> uh, grandma told me, "Hey, you!" And then like I did it twice, and then they put me in blacklist. <laughs> I can't go in some museums yeah. uh, because I'm touching things. <laughs> it's, it's. Uh, I I want to do that. It's like every. It's and also people don't realize that those paintings are being touched in storage, like all the time, <laughs> all the time. Like if you go to if you go to the back house of a conservatorium in a museum, like paintings are just like, you know, lying there. Yeah, uh, like, all in fingertips. <laughs> right, like finger tips. Like the guys, like yeah, the oils. But it's like nobody cares about the oils inside the conservatorium. Like all they use is like a rug under the floor. It's hilarious. It's actually, it's it's hilarious to, to be like you can't touch that. And then in the back, like somebody's just rubbing their hands all over the thing, you hey, know, with a cloth. Okay, right. Right. <laughs> Absolutely, I want to touch it. I want to feel it. You know, like I'm sure you would, you would like, you know, you would love to touch Egan Schiller. Um, I don't know, painting to yeah. feel this texture. You know, like it's like crazy. You you just connect with an artist. You just yeah. feel feel the soul, the life of this painting. You definitely have to touch everything. I mean, there is no 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 point not to touch. And sound like a crazy. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's like, you know, it's it makes sense, and it's like I really think it's the evolution. Like that's why I got excited about Small's question because, it's sort of the concept of touching paintings that you're never allowed to touch in VR, and also I take it as like haptic feedback gloves. So those are like gloves that like simulate you touching something in the digital space, but also museums are like are like making casts of sculptures and displaying them next to the sculptures mm-hmm. so that 
the, the blind yeah. are able to touch the sculpture, but in turn, yes, it also... that's what I wanted to say. Mm. Right. No, do you have a point to add to it, or... That'd be crazy. Some, some paintings are also, like, made for blind people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, I saw in, in Amsterdam, they, they did it, like, with Van Gogh paintings, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it was Van Gogh. And, yeah, the blind people could touch it and feel the brush strokes and the texture. I don't, I don't think they could, like, uh, see, if you can say this, uh, the whole paintings. But at least they could feel how artists moved his brush. And I think it's very important. Yeah, it's it's absolutely important. And it's... <laughs> there were small droids that would be crazy if you could run your hands over the Mona Lisa. Oh, oh yeah. That will be dead to Lisa. So, he left, before I, he left before I could say this, but I, like, I, I was also going to say, like, hey, just don't... Like, running your hands over the Mona Lisa is, is going gonna, is gonna to happen. Like, somebody's going to 3D scan the thing and we're going to touch it. It's bound to happen. Yeah. Because if I'm thinking like, about... Sorry? Uh, no, no, okay, go on. No, I was, was going to say, like, if I'm thinking about it, it's some, some dude with the money to do it can act, is also thinking about it, you know? And the coolest thing I think about is, is like, the fractionalization of paintings, right? And so, right. imagine, right, like, in the future, if somebody um, buys one of your paintings, right? Like, say, say the owner of segment one, right, in 10 years from now, realizes mm -hmm. that he's sitting on, like, $10 million worth in value, right? Oh. Just, just hypothetical. Who knows? Maybe. It could happen. Mm -hmm. With how okay. this space <laughs> is going, it could happen. Who knows? We might all be just dealing our art in the millions, because it's all internet money anyways, so that was a joke but, um, essentially if somebody were to take your segment one and then if it's worth 10 million and then fractionalize it into like a thousand fractions right by code and then you can sell those thousand or like 10,000 fractions to artists and people who want to own a portion of your painting but can't afford the full value of your painting Oh, you're full of great ideas. I'm not. This is already in play. This has already happened in the space. Fractionalization oh, no. is already a thing. No, it is. It's <laughs> like, and it's like, I think about it in the sense of like mu museums. Like, the only way a museum can survive is if they fractionalize their collections. Because otherwise, it's like, why would you go to a museum when you have everything in the virtual space? At least that's my thinking. Like, I'm like the digital, sp like, in the, but you know what I mean. Like, that's my. That's my thought of it. Uh, with fractionalization. Well, I ho I I still hope that we will have like you remember that lockdown when everything happened oh, yeah. and museums went to online. Uh, they started like showing their uh, expositions online. It was like really sad somehow because I'm I'm I, I really love to see like the physical painting because light is reflecting because you know there's a shadow there is uh, like a texture that you can only see when you're moving your head from one side to another well, so i and i hope small <laughs> not not really uh angry with us because i think he left us after we start talking that we have to touch all paintings oh no no, yeah, no of course we're joking it's not like we're going no, you no. know like we're not telling go everyone and touch everything you know smalls i think he just had something to do it's um, okay. I oh, hope it's not angry. Oh, no. Please don't be angry. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> don't worry. I'm not touching. I just touched one painting. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm not guilty. <laughs> I I had a professor who had a who had a a kid lick a painting. She licked the Van Gogh. Mm. It, it, it's like uh, he was like he, he was teaching in uh, somewhere in like a th not Nova Scotia, somewhere in Canada. And he took a bunch mm -hmm. of students for the first time to a museum. And, like, this girl went up to Van Gogh and just licked it before anybody else could Ooh. see it. And he was like, you just, what did you just do? Don't tell anybody. Also, nice, you just licked did, Van Gogh. Did he lick it? Like, she, she licked like, it. Like, it was his tongue? Sorry? Did she? Uh, with, his, uh, with her with tongue? With her tongue, like, yeah. Emily? Yeah, she licked it. Like, well, that's crazy. It's like, it was just like one of those things where you're like, if you never, like, I, I don't know how you come about that thought process, but it happened. 
I I hope I'm getting that story correctly. What I think maybe maybe she touched it. I don't know. I'll say she licked it because that sounds funny. I I hope it's true. I really watch my professor. The most, <laughs> the most sensitive part of her body. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I hope my professor like doesn't send me an email saying like, "Yo, you got the story wrong." <laughs> um, well, on I I have to wrap this up. Okay, um, you wanted five minutes ago. So. The, I think I think I said that we have to wrap this up like fifteen minutes ago, and then we just started talking Maybe. about like the questions, and then I don't know. This see, that's what happens when it's a conversation. You don't have to like, you know. Sorry, guys, I gotta go. You have class in one hour. And you're like, oh god, thanks. No, it's just I. Uh, I, I, I finished my work, so I'm kind of free. I I can just no. now paint well, or something. So. And it's it's also late in Berlin, no? Or I imagine that's where you live. No, it's actually uh, almost eight p.m. So it's like perfect. Oh, okay. Perfect time. Uh, it, it's yeah. Uh, what time is Canada now? It's one forty-four in the afternoon. Cool. <laughs> Did you have your lunch? Uh, no, I'm about to have it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you're hungry. That's why. That's why you want to finish this conversation. Like, come on, stop talking. No, no. no. <laughs> do, do you know this uh, Robert Sapolsky professor? He has a lot of like uh, videos on YouTube. Robert? No, I don't. Sapolsky. No, you should definitely see him. He, he's explained why like person um, uh, angry when he's hungry and oh, like, I see. like this stuff biological stuff about humans this is so cool i'll check it out i'll check it out uh, i just we... understand like if you're hungry you you better go and eat <laughs> i need to well like i just generally don't eat that well so i i just need to eat in general but uh i will i will do that i will do that um i actually That's also great. we've been talking or like we've been recording for an hour and a half so I just really? say yeah. I just wow. say that at the end, just to like because everybody's like, "Oh, we really talked for that long." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, we did." <laughs> so it's like forty minutes or something. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the the what uh, art talks. Uh, where where time stops. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, thank, thank you for coming by to the artist talk. Thank you for inviting me. That that was really sweet and unexpected, unexpectable. So and, I'm I'm really. I was really nervous, but at the end, I, I it was all good. So yeah. Thank you for for letting me feel like like you know like comfortable and yeah, it's, super easy. So it's it's my pleasure. It's well, that's like the whole aim is just like to give like to talk to artists, and you know have it be a fun conversation, not like a rigorous like you know academic like so your color theory hmm and you're like oh god no like, <laughs> like no this is this isn't you know the fifties anymore. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Well, we need just lively, uh, normal conversations and be like a people. Exactly. Um, this is for the YouTube video. Um, I have the links for the MetaKey Discord for all. I have your Tanya's. I have your <laughs> website link. I have your link tree, and I have your Twitter below. Um, yeah, thank you. And I also shared some artists I I really love, so I shared some links. To, yeah. Uh, Wikipedia. Those those are in our live stream questions channel in the MetaKey Discord. For those who are listening in the YouTube video, come join us. We have a lot of stuff happening in this Discord. Um, and also, Tanya, for for you, we you will definitely be hearing from me in the future about coming on again. I'm a big believer of artists oh, oh. Um, <laughs> talking to artists like after a year or like six months to see how their work evolves and stuff. So. That okay, so I have time to to learn English a little bit to involve my English. <laughs> your, your English is not that bad. Your English is very good, actually. Um, oh yes, thank you. And then, to the people listening on YouTube, have a good one. Bye bye. <laughs>